Northrup, author of Money, A Love Story, and as we are birthing this baby book, I'm asking some of my great friends about their own money love story because I would like to create a movement where more powerful women, and a few great men as well, talk openly and in a conscious loving way about money so it'll inspire other people to do the same thing. So I'm here with my friend Latham Thomas who's the author of Mama Glow and it's an amazing beautiful book and she is a birth expert, a nutrition expert, she's a doula, I mean what are you not? <laughs> she's a goddess. So I'd love to. So she. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to know, Latham. When you were growing up, what did you learn, witness? What were you exposed to around money in your childhood? It's a very interesting question. When I grew up, my sort of relationship with money was that um, I felt like it grew on trees. Um, for one, because uh, in one household with my mom, um, I would see her sort of hustling. She was a single parent. She raised me and my sister and she kind of was like making things happen but behind the scenes we didn't really see how sort of this you know the exchange of money mm -hmm. um we just got things so like i had all of my needs met yeah and when i would go to my father's um it was sort of like because they were separated there was this fun like whimsical fantasy of getting whatever i wanted uh -huh. you know i want this doll i want that barbie and the, it seems like money grew on trees. Just, just like, I it was get just always I want. yes. And so I didn't have this sort of notion that things there was like value mm -hmm. and money exchange mm -hmm. that came later when I went to boarding school and I started to see that people came from different economic backgrounds yeah. and what they spent and what they were able to spend. I learned about it in high school actually, okay. really when I had my first checkbook and. Uh -huh credit cards that my parents gave me when I was yeah. in boarding school and I was spending like I was an heiress to some sort of major <laughs> company. I was spending like that because I had no idea. Uh -huh. And then it sort of, you know, I sort of started to learn at that uh -huh. point. But I was at 14 at that point. Uh-huh. Yeah. So along, so growing up like that, like that's kind of a blessing in certain ways, right? And then kind of a curse as well. Like I mm -hmm. can see both sides of it. As you were kind of heading out on your own in your 20s, and I know you had your son, and that mm -hmm. was a really beautiful experience, but suddenly, like having that responsibility of being a mom and starting your business and all that happened. So how did those, um, that learning around money and, and learning the value of it in your high school years, like what happened in the next part of the chapter of the story, the next chapter? Sure, so I would say that once I left high school mm -hmm. and traveled, went to college, um, moving to New York City, as you know, most people know who've been here or who yeah. live here, it's not um, free. It's not the <laughs> cheapest city on the no, planet. No, it is not. It's probably one of the most Nobody expensive. Nobody to New York to save money. Right. Yeah. So it's probably the most expensive. So right away I learned like, wow, you know, things cost, you know, and for the type of lifestyle that I'm used to yeah. and comfortable living, um, I have to make a certain amount of money. Yeah. And I had my first little job in college at the business school uh -huh. at Columbia University. Okay. I was an undergrad at Columbia, so that was the first job that I had. And it was really good because I was sort of privy to conversations and mm. um, sort of um, conversations, but also even in some instances, like dilly, dilly dallying in classes and yep. kind of learning a little bit about what business school majors were, um, were focused on. And um, the MBA students had like a totally different, you know, set of values, obviously. That's cool. So uh, for me to sort of be marinating in that energy, I kind of absorbed a lot, even mm -hmm. though I wasn't partaking in most of the, you know, the classroom yeah. coursework. Sort of by osmosis. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. And along that journey, what have been, like, what's one of the moments that was the most challenging for you? around money and, and what did you learn from that? Like, did you, were there any moments that stick out as a, a little bit of a stumbling block or hiccup? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I would We've say- we had them, yeah. so. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've had the, the, you know, how every other kid has when they like travel and they go to another country and they have a certain amount of money and they realize like they ran out <laughs> and you call home, you're like, hey, can I get some money? And they're like, what do you want, 100? No, I want 500. <laughs> it's like, I've had those things happen uh -huh. when I was younger, and then there's a certain point where that's unacceptable. You just don't right. run out of money and call home yeah. and ask somebody to like basically wire you some money, like you know, 
um, magically. Uh -huh. um, so I've had those, you know, times. And then once I became a mother, you know, I was, had my son, I was 23. And uh, at that point, I was a year out of college mm -hmm. um, or a year and a half out of college. And, um, and I was in this new life, you know, being responsible, having a rent, having overhead, all these yeah. things I was responsible for, um, paying bills, you know. And even when I was in college, I had an apartment because I was just too cool to live on campus. So I was very used to already paying my uh -huh. own bills. And being in a boarding school setting, like I said you're before, I was already independent. You're relatively independent, but you're used to kind of spending money. Mm -hmm. So I was comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, but once I once I was in this sort of family dynamic, this family unit with my son, his father, yeah. um, I was sort of in charge of you know allocating expenses and figuring yeah. all those things out. And it was the first time I'd ever had to do it, right? Yeah. Um, once we um, separated, though, then I was doing it on my own. The scariest point for me was when we separated, and it was like there I was really a stay-at-home mom at the time because yeah. I had had the baby. I stayed with him. I didn't put him down until he was three years old, so I held him oh until gosh. he was like three. I did some freelancing, you know, um, jobs in the space that I was in, which was more like environmental sciences. Yeah in that time frame as I was sort of building out the vision for what Mama Glow became. And I was mostly home with him. And what I saw was that there was a way that I was being kind of, I wouldn't say like, I don't wanna say held captive, but in a sense, like there was a way to kind of um, harness my energy in one place and yeah. keep me contained um, in the relationship and within the responsibilities mm -hmm. of, the, of the household by not allowing this, or not supporting what my dreams and goals were yeah. at the time. And I think a lot of women, especially younger women, will get caught up in these like ideas of like, oh, I wanna be you know, settled and married, and, and it's alluring, and it's amazing, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. But I think what's really important is to delineate what it's gonna look like you know, between the two you know, people who are the heads of the yes. household what do the responsibilities look like? And what, like have those conversations, have the conversations. not just assume. Not assume that like, okay, so when the baby's <laughs> two, like I'm going back to work and what's and next? we haven't talked about that maybe. Right. Right. And I didn't use my voice at the time, so I yeah. was sort of like, oh, we have different values, yeah. right? Yeah. And I learned that late. Uh -huh. So when it came time to separate, when my son was about three and a half, I was totally frightened because sure. it was the first time I was really supporting myself and somebody who was completely dependent upon yes. me with no basis for making any money because I hadn't a business structure in Whoa. place. Right? So in yeah. really like in micro, you know, or light, lightning speed, I would say, I sort of came up with the, the idea to launch straight into the business, cool. you know, because I was always marinating in the juices yes. of what it was going to be. But I hadn't full on decided to take the leap because there was really no pressure at the mm -hmm. time to do it. And so I really thank God for that sort of set of circumstances, yeah. even though they were challenging because it thrust me into the business, so you know, that I'm doing today, but definitely with, you know, struggle. I mean, for yeah. sure there was ant days and grasshopper days along the way. <laughs> Um, <laughs> from grasshopper days. I've you never know, heard that. It's sort of like, you know, yeah, you know what that means, though. I do. It's like days I where you're like that. eating oatmeal for dinner, <laughs> yeah. and then days when you're like, you know, going to Cipriani. Yeah. So it's like, it's definitely something where, you know, you get to really appreciate yeah. because you've, you know, you weren't handed everything. The you had to work for that. it. Yeah. And there must be a sense, I'm just assuming, but you can tell me if I'm right. There must be a sense of like knowing that you created your business and that this is like your baby and you're responsible for it, does that feel awesome? Yeah. I don't think <laughs> right? there's any better feeling, I think, than doing something for yourself. You know, when you find that you're in love with something yeah. and you feel so passionate about it and it sort of like wakes you up, it awakens mm -hmm. something in you mm -hmm. that makes you sort of have the single pointed focus to move in direction towards that thing. Yeah. And so um, whether or not it's, um, you know, a business or, you know, some people it's not, some people they are, they're sort of entrepreneurial within whatever business structure they're in. Uh, for me, I just 
don't take directions very well from others. And <laughs> I always think outside the box. I'm yeah. always thinking about something else. So I was like, how am I ever gonna sit in like a desk and like mm -hmm. have somebody hand me a stack of papers? And I, I was like, I'm never gonna be able to do that. Right. I know that about myself. Right. So I set up my life and my work in a way that it was sort of like a constant ebb and flow yeah. of the things that I love and the people that I love. And so I'm always with my son. If I'm not, I'm with somebody else's son helping mm -hmm. them give birth. Or yes. So it's like, I'm always around people that I love and things that I love to do. And to me, it's really important to have quality of life yeah. and not just have money. Yeah. So I really think that some of the experiences um, that I've gotten to partake in have been a result of also relationships that I've cultivated. Mm -hmm. And I think in business, a huge thing especially when we're talking about you know cultivating money cultivating relationships because that's also currency yeah. and it's very important I think when you're on a journey where you're building something where you're sort of the figurehead mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to like at some point cash in on some of these relationships yeah. that can help you to further grow your business Absolutely. or other areas of your life I love that you pointed that out because so often people think about um, success is only related to how many dollars are in their bank account and I love that you know relationships are a form of abundance quality of life is a form of abundance loving the people you're spending time around is a form of abundance so yes. thank you for bringing that to the table thank you I really appreciate you sharing appreciate your story you. and if you want to hear more money love stories you can head over to moneyalovestory.com and you can also grab this book over there when you do grab the book you'll get access to <laughs> a free two-hour event that I'm putting on called A Course in Having Enough. It's an online event that I'll be having guest teachers, Marianne Williamson, Barbara Stanny, and Amanda Steinberg, founder of dailyworth.com. So it's a really awesome class. Grab the book, get the course, and if you want to find more out about Latham, I really highly recommend her book, Mama Glow. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, love. Love you.